Hey there, my name's Chris with 10 Pound Gorilla. I'm a business analyst and project manager, and today we're going to talk about DNN SQL commands. Um, at a very high level, uh, DNN has a SQL console tool that allows you to run database queries uh, right on the website that allows you to access data that you wouldn't normally have access without um, logging into something like Microsoft SQL Studio. Um, and so for an end user or an administrator of a website, uh, it gives us a lot of power to be able to look at data, run some analysis, and um, you know do QA testing on, on our websites. And we'll move forward here. No, no, I'm in my browser. There we go. So uh, what it is, uh, DNN SQL Council is a super helpful tool that allows us to get a look under the hood uh, and see the database structure to better understand how data is being managed and used within DNN. Uh, it's a tool that's available for host level users in the DNN website. So uh, if you're a host user, you can go into the settings section and uh, click on the DNN SQL Council and, and start to work with that data. Uh, it allows for exporting the data or the queries that you're running, so you can take that data and give it to clients for a report or do analysis on that data. Uh, it helps you simplify tedious tasks by using queries to update uh, bulk on the website. You can validate your changes uh, as you're going through and doing your QA testing by looking at the, the data in, in the database. Uh, it enables super duper investigation mode, which is my favorite task to have where you can run queries on the database, look at um, what you're seeing as the data structure or the changes that are being implemented, uh, and then find out what changes you ultimately need to make uh, and other cool uh, query related things that you can do. So uh, starting off, DNN SQL Council is not scary, um, but you should be pretty cautious when working with it. Um, running a database query that is bad, like a, a poorly uh, written update or delete script can uh, update things that you didn't expect to have changed, and that will require that you uh, need to do a rollback or database restore. Uh, that usually involves contacting Mark, which is uh, going to make him a little angry on that front. So um, always be careful on the queries that you're running. Um, running a poorly written select all statement on a really large table can have some performance problems. Um, it can take a while to execute that query to pull in all of that data and display it in the page. So um, it can have an impact on load performance. So you want to be careful when you're writing those queries. Um, there's tons of information out there on how to optimize the queries that you're writing or how to write efficient queries and not uh, you know, pull in too much data, like a select 500 instead of select every record from the database table uh, is going to uh, perform better and allow you to start your analysis. Uh, same thing on the caution side here. This is just a, a peace of mind, I guess. Writing a bad SQL script is like writing a bad piece of JavaScript. Um, the browser is going to tell you, hey, you have a problem. In this case, DNN through the SQL console will spit out an error for you saying, hey, hey, dummy, you spelled select wrong. That's not a valid query. And then it'll tell you to uh, kind of give you some information on where you need to go and, and start to make those changes. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, if you write a bad update script, Let's say it's still a valid update script. You might just be updating every row instead of a very select few that you're trying to update. And making those changes could require that you have to do a database restore. Um, and so moral of the story is you want to be very careful about the scripts that you are writing uh, and executing. Um, DNN is a relational database system, so it has a lot of interconnectivity in all of the tables. And so um, doing a delete can be pretty dangerous, um, and typically you want to go through the process that DNN has built to manage uh, things like deleting. Uh, a good example is like deleting uh, a module. You wouldn't want to run a delete script to, to delete a module because there are other tables that require that data and expect that data to be there. Um, and so you want to go through the process of deleting it uh, through the delete page function or delete module functionality that DNN offers. Uh, in general, if you have questions, you're trying to access data and you're just not sure about the queries you're looking to run, ask Mark or Benny or Aaron um, from for some advice on like the queries and, and how you can structure that, that data. And of course, develop on a test site, run your queries, build your queries on a test site so you can confirm that it's doing what you expect it to, and then you can move forward from there. 
All right, so looking at some of the cool things you can do with SQL Console, uh, you can easily export all of that data. So very similar if you're running a query in SQL Studio, uh, you can export that data and work with it in different programs or just use it for reporting. Um, the SQL Console in DNN supports exporting it as an Excel file, CSV, PDF, or copying it to your clipboard. Um, and so that makes it really easy for you to pull out that data from DNN and then work with it some way. Um, you can execute multiple queries back to back. So in this example, I ran three queries um, and then I can export them individually and work with that data. Within DNN, you can save the queries that you're writing and it's just going to make it so you can select it as part of a drop down. So where it says like uh, email exports in my screenshot, uh, that's a drop down that I can click on and access other queries that I've saved and that I want to run. Um, you also have the ability to import a SQL file or really any SQL script. It can be written in different file formats. I, I never have done it before, but I did it for this uh, presentation and you can import like a SQL file, a markdown, a text. It's just basically reading the, the script and then importing that text in there for uh, you to try to execute. So um, where this becomes really helpful is if we are doing some development and we have Mark or Benny or Aaron doing some module development and we want to validate those changes as we're testing them and not just as an end user, can I go do X, Y, or Z? Um, we can get a S SQL script from them, do our test case, run over to SQL Console, execute that script, and confirm that change. Uh, and it's just going to make it a lot easier for us to validate those changes instead of us making those changes and then going back to the, the developer and asking them to confirm everything's uh, doing what it's supposed to do behind the scenes. Uh, this is taking a quick step back, looking at the difference in the different types of tables that you're going to see in the database. And there's just generally two tables that, that we're dealing with. We have uh, base tables and view tables. Um, a view table is a virtualized table. Um, it's usually includes some additional information, something like a join where it's pulling in two different sets of data and, and giving you more information to work with. Um, when we look at the tabs, table, which is your pages in DNN, um, the tabs table contains 37 columns of data, where the view tabs contains 44 columns of data. So it just gives us a little bit more data. It helps us better understand some of the relationship with uh, the different database tables that exist uh, in DNN. And I have a link to a resource that explains the difference between tabs and views. There's a lot more information in there. Um, the main note for it, though, is that a view is a virtualized table that is built when you execute that query. And so the data is never um, persistent. If you tried to update a view table, nothing is going to change on the website. Um, it is only rendering that data as you run that query. So if you are making a change to a tab or a table or a page rather, um, you would want to do that in the tabs table and not the view tabs table. All right, so getting into investigation, this is a query that I have to run all the time because I never know the tables I'm trying to get into. Um, there's a ton of tables in DNN. So this query uh, select all from information schema of tabs or tables, sorry, I can't read. Um, we'll spit out all of the tables that exist in the database. And so we can then start to filter down the tables that we have, and then we can query those tables individually to um, get a look at the table and the data structure in it. I thought this was pretty interesting. Uh, the Verijet website has a total of uh, 378 tables in its database. Um, Easy DNN News takes up 160 of those tables, and Too Sexy takes up 16 of those tables. Um, so EasyDNN is about 40% or 42% of the total number of tables uh, in the Verijet database. Uh, that kind of speaks to the um, the interconnectivity of all the tables within the EasyDNN news module. There's a lot of relationships built in with those. So performing an update on a table like a delete can be pretty dangerous because there's all of the other tables that may be relying on some of that data in some way through a, a bridge. 
All right, so two images here just kind of showing that as an example, when I execute that query, I'm seeing 378 tables being returned for us. I can then use the filter control, type in some keyword that I'm trying to filter down to to find some specific table. In this case, the module that we built has a uh, prefix of VER underscore, so I can filter down by that find the tables that I want to query and execute um, additional queries. Um, all of the modules in DNN genuinely, generally <laughs> have a uh, naming structure that's going to be consistent. So easy DNN news has a prefix, too sexy has like too sick um, action form. We can see here in this uh, first screenshot on the left has a prefix as well. So you can start to sort and filter down to find uh, database tables that are relevant for your, your queries. I mentioned this earlier, um, looking at QA testing, um, being able to query the direct directly as we're performing some QA testing is super helpful um, because we can execute all of these test cases that we have and check and validate and make sure that that data is getting stored in uh, in those tables. So in this case, for this client, we built out some affiliate program where um, we needed to track where people are coming in from an external uh, referral. And we had this very complicated um, business logic that was built into it to determine if and when we should be applying those affiliate codes. Um, and so we had, I think, 40 or 50 different test cases that we needed to run. So I was able to run them individually, run the queries, validate that the data is getting stored uh, and retaining it through the entire process for the end user. Uh, the, another example we have here is exporting email addresses. Um, there are multiple areas where you might be collecting email addresses for users, and we're, we needed to generate an export of all of the email addresses uh, in, in the database. And so uh, for this client, we wanted to get the email addresses of people who have signed up for an account, people who have emailed a quote to someone, and then um, anyone who had filled out a contact form, what email address did they fill out? And they had a handful of contact forms across the website. And so for someone to go in and visit every form, generate that export, and then put all of that data together, it's a pretty tedious process. Um, and building an admin interface so someone can do that, um, like a, a program to basically do this query, right, would take a medium sized development effort to do something like that. So um, for this client, we generated three SQL commands. We hop into the database or into DNN every two two weeks, run this query, export the data and ship it off to the client so they can report on it. Um, it took 15 to 30 minutes to generate the query, rerunning it every two weeks takes five minutes, send it off to the client. Uh, it was a really cost effective solution to export all of this data. And that's me rambling on it, about it a little bit more. Um, a, another example, I think, is kind of looking at long term how this data gets used. Uh, they've been working through a Salesforce CRM integration um, or just development as a, a company policy to use Salesforce. Um, realistically, we could build integrations at every entry point to send that data to Salesforce. Um, or we could build some kind of, you know, stored procedure, or not stored procedure, but um, some kind of microservice to basically run these queries, get this data, and then ship it off to uh, to Salesforce. All right, so this one was uh, looking at syncing data within um, within different database tables in DNN. So uh, this client has about 1,600 portals. Uh, in their DNN instance. They've created these portals over the course of a decade, um, and there's a lot of inconsistency in the data that they were creating. They were putting typos in the copyright information. They rebranded slightly and uploaded a different logo over the years. So um, when we looked at the tables or the data in those columns, we could see that there's some consistency, but it's just a little inconsistent with the, the specific formatting of all of the data. And so uh, we generated a query to an analyze the data across all 1600 portals. What does the data look like today? That told us that it's pretty consistent, but they've been inconsistent about the exact type format that they've been putting in there. And so we were able to analyze the data, figure out what we need to do next, which uh, in this case, we wrote a SQL script to update all 1600 portals. Uh, we were updating the logo file and footer text just to change that value and make it consistent. So uh, I didn't need to go in and update 1600 portals to have some uh, 
consistent data there. Now, when I queried the um, portals table, I, I, I queried the, the view portals table. Um, that was able to tell me what the footer text was and the logo file value is in the database. If you query just the portals table, it's not going to tell you that information because that actually lives in the portal localization table, which is brand new. Didn't know about it and not brand new. It's brand new to me. Um, so I needed to go figure out where that data lives. And um, so I needed to do a Google search to find it. And I just did a Google search of query search table by column, and it pointed me to uh, a query that I can run, which is select all information schema of columns where column name is like, and then I can feed in the value of the column that I'm looking for. In this case, I was looking for footer text, and when I run that query, it's going to return three tables, one of which is the view portal table, which I was querying to view the footer text data to begin with. And then it pointed me to the um, portal localization table telling me that's ultimately where the source of information lives. So that kind of guided me through to understand what table I need to be able to update to be able to make that change and pretty quick process to make that as opposed to a manual one. Um, this one is looking at doing skin and layout file analysis or management when we're talking about long term management for websites as uh, websites evolve over time for client. They are adding in new containers, layout files, um, maybe making modifications to those. And we are sometimes tasked to understand when we make a change, where is that all going to have an impact? And so running a query like this is going to be able to tell us where the layout files are being used, and then we can easily go in and validate those on those specific pages. So if you ever cautious about updating a layout file, uh, you can run a query to identify all of the pages that are using it and then go and validate your changes as part of it. So um, I have two queries here. One is just grabbing the the skin source, the URL basically to the skin or layout file, the name of the page and the URL to get to that page. So then we can go and, and test those changes that we're implementing. Uh, the other one is really doing a count, and this is a good way to audit uh, a site and understand how many layout files are they using? Can we reduce those? Can we consolidate them to help provide a more scalable solution for the site? So I think if I navigate to the next one here, we can see that query being run kind of small, but there's about 15 different uh, layout files, I believe, that are being used on the site. Um, this is actually containers, so um, not a layout file, but a container, same idea. Uh, we can query to identify what containers are being used um, and to what level, and then potentially look for ways to consolidate and remove um, or audit the changes that we're implementing. This one is helpful because EasyDNN is so easy to create tons of categories and uh, not leverage them. So um, in some instances, you'll want to just do a, a good, uh, healthy audit on your easy DNA news categories and understand, are you using them? Is it time to consider restructuring your categories or consolidating some of them? Uh, I ran this on our portal site where we store all of our documentation. We have two tables or two two categories rather where we don't have any articles um, that are using that category so that could be a hint that we need to write some documentation on management or designers or that we just have subcategories that are using that content so it's just a good way to audit this when we look at client sites where they post a lot of news um, related content or even resources um, you know they may have hundreds of categories and it becomes difficult to understand are these still even being used do we need to keep these how can we clean this up for them uh, in this particular query we're doing a subquery so we are um, essentially we're selecting all of the categories that do not exist um, in our subquery, which is selected distinct categories from easy DNA news categories. And that easy DNA news categories is really just a bridge table, which is saying this article has this category. And so we're saying, get us all of the unique categories that are used in easy DNA news. And then let's find all of those that do not exist, um, meaning that we're not using them today. So easy way to filter those down. And in our portal documentation, Laura shared this uh, update script that was running on uh, another client. 
this is a good way to remove some bad data in an easy DNA news. We've done something like this when importing content over from something like maybe live articles or pack flash when you're cross grading over to something else. There may be inline styles that you want to remove. Um, and so in this case, we're doing an update script where we are replacing some data, which is very similar to what you would do in um, even like a JavaScript replace. Um, this type of replace is very particular um, because it's looking for that exact match. When we look at WYSIWYG editors putting in inline styles, uh, there can be a lot of inconsistency in the order of the styles that are being included. So it's not always going to catch everything for you, but you can uh, cover your bases with that as well. And Mark could definitely help write some fancy queries to identify inline styles and do some more uh, data, data analysis on what data you need to clean up. All right, so tips for writing queries. Uh, I am a, a fan of W3 schools besides all of the ads that they run on query documentation. So very easy resource to pull up some uh, information on how you can go about writing or structuring your queries. Um, there's tons of resources out there and, and um, training videos right on how to write queries and, and work through that process. Um, we also have a document or a, a snippet in the Bitbucket repo, which has useful DNN SQL commands. Some of those that are in this are referenced in there. And then there's a few other niche ones like exporting content from PackFlash into um, ECDNN News. So some takeaways, uh, you should feel confident to explore DNN more uh, at a database level. Using the SQL console tool is really helpful to look at the data, work with it, and understand how it's being leveraged in DNN. Um, you should ask your developers for queries that you can run against the database when you're performing QA testing, uh, and you should leverage SQL Council to simplify accessing and working with data uh, within your DNN projects. Go query stuff. <laughs> That's all I got. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to our Gorilla Learning Lab. We have a lot more banana tidbits for you to get ape over. Check out our other videos or visit our website at www.10poundgorilla.com. I'm swinging on out of here. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You're not subscribed? That's bananas!